And welcome back. Now, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or the CSIR, uh, say that South Africa could face the worst recorded load shedding for 2020 and, of course, the next two to three years unless urgent and focused decisions are taken about the ongoing energy crisis. And this is in stark contrast to what the Chief Executive Officer of ESCOM said in January this year, which was that load shedding might be limited to three days over the winter period, etc. Now, the CSIR says that South Africa recorded the worst load shedding so far in 2019, as well as the unprecedented implementation of Stage 6. But the current energy situation could now support past that. Stage 2 load shedding was rolled out yesterday due to the breakdown and servicing of power station. So uh, that will of course resume again this morning. So and to discuss this further we're joined by Senior Engineer and Energy Systems Modeler from the CSIR, Joanne Kallitz. Thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So firstly Joanne, let's just look at what Eskom has told us and what the CSR, uh, CSIR's projection is for 2020. So the CSIR projection is really that we expect a high probability of load shedding over the next probably 18 months to two years. Um, ESCOM CEO did actually this week also update their prediction, projection to around 18 months. So it, it does seem that we are aligned. Now, looking at what we saw in 2019, and then, of course, this year we had the disruption brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. So businesses were closed, but then uh, in level three, we saw a greater return to economic activity. And yet we are still talking about um, power interruptions, power cuts, load shedding, no matter how you describe it, that is what it ultimately comes down to. So how are we comparing at this stage to what we were going through in 2019? So 2019 was indeed a a very bad year historically, with stage six load shedding obviously being unprecedented for the country. Now in 2020 thus far, we've actually surpassed 2019 levels. And this was really um, the major contributor was in January, February and March, right before we had the lockdown. So unfortunately for the rest of the year, if we do continue to have load shedding, we have definitely had better than the previous years. But we obviously will continue to have load shedding, Joanne. And uh, you're saying that uh, this situation could actually uh, be trebled at some stage in the future if no urgent interventions are taken. So what are those interventions that we need to take as a country and when do we need to take them? So the CSR's research really proposed three major interventions. Two of them are actually not new and they are ongoing. So the first one being the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. They are running a, an emergency risk procurement program whereby they are trying to procure around 2,000 to 3,000 megawatts of emergency capacity. Now, our recommendation really here is to fast track this process as we don't foresee this capacity coming online before the end of 2021. So that does leave us still with an 18 month window where, where this capacity is not available to relieve the system. The second option is then to also accelerate the new capacity that is planned in the integrated resource plan. So that is our country's national planning document for new capacity. And this capacity is expected as early as 2022 and consists of technologies such as new solar photovoltaics, um, gas, there's also some battery storage. And this process does take a long time to get all of the paperwork correct and to get obviously all of the new capacity online and constructed. And so far, this process does seem to be taking too long and we do need this capacity urgently. And then the third and final step that we did recommend, which is something we really wanted to highlight, is customer response at scale. So what we mean by this is for energy users to essentially start supplementing their electricity supply with their own generation. And this is happening currently, but not really at the, at the scale and pace that could help the national system uh, more aggressively. And how we could enable this is to either incentivize users to, to relax some of the current regulations that are inhibiting businesses to do this timelessly. And if we can get a lot of, especially in the large industrial customers, a lot of them 
doing this at the same time, we could really start to see um, some relief on the power system at a national scale and thereby reduce load shedding or even prevent load shedding in some hours. And also importantly, to give ESCOM the breathing room that they require to do maintenance and to improve the energy availability factor of their coal fleet, which is one of the major um, co contributors of the load shedding that we have today. But what about the intervention such as uh, procuring from um, uh, the uh, renewable energy uh, producers and also uh, those plants like Kusile and Madupi, uh, aren't they supposed to bring about some sort of relief uh, without necessarily asking customers to go off the grid, Joanne? So indeed, they will, they will produce additional energy onto the grid. And of course, one of our recommendations inherently is that they should be also fast-tracked and come online as soon as possible. The recommendation for customers to supplement their supply is really just that. It's a supplementation of supply and not necessarily to go off-grid. That is quite expensive for customers to do and still ground in which it is economic for them to supplement some of their generation capacity and not, uh, not all of their generation capacity. So the CSIR also um, expects the energy shortfall to reach uh, 4,500 gigawatt hours by 2020. And um, you're also saying that that is likely to cost the economy between 60 and 120 billion rand. Please elaborate on this and, and, and what are the projections over the next two to three years with regard to cost to the economy? So the projection for 2020 was, uh, in our study, a little bit worse than the previous year. If the energy availability of the ESCOM coal fleet does not begin to improve relative to the previous years, and it has been declining over the last 20 years, so this does seem a likely trend, unfortunately, unless ESCOM can really start turning around the health of the power system. The load shedding predictions from 2021 onwards that we did were dependent on Obviously, if the EAF can improve or not, and if not, it could be worse than 2020 and obviously continuing to get worse as the, as the demand in the economy grows and EAF declines. Now, obviously, if we do do the interventions that we recommended, we actually re-simulated the power system with all of those interventions in place and we found that we could almost completely mitigate load shedding uh, at least by the end of 2021 if we do do those things timelessly. Joanne and Khaled, the, the cost to the economy, of course, is, is quite large. And there are a number of economic assumptions that you can make on what the actual value is of each megawatt hour or gigawatt hour that is not supplied. We used a, a generic value from uh, the Department of um, Energy. And with those predictions, obviously, as you said, we could, we could face in the, in the order of billions. And it's obviously not, not nothing which is important that we fix the situation. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. We have to leave it there, unfortunately. Joanne Kalitz is uh, from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research talking to us about South Africa's energy crisis. Let's take a quick break before we get to news headlines.